Hey, Lucas here. Today I want to just talk about uh, how to install a, uh, well, in this case it's a L00 chuck. I think the same procedure would be pretty useful for any kind of uh, long American taper uh, spindle nose and chuck. So uh, we've got a, a burner chuck on here. Uh, I'm going to take it off first and uh, kind of talk about some of the things that happen when you're taking it off. It's kind of interesting because you run into resistance on the, on the extraction nut to where the, the locking collar really is what it is. And the locking collar is right here. You run into a couple different steps of resistance on this as you're taking this off. And uh, you'll find when you're taking off, uh, you know, extracting a, uh, uh, the, the 5C adapter, there's like three steps of resistance. And taking this off, there's two. So uh, we're going to pull this off and, and just show you. So and one thing I always like to do is put a piece of plywood, this just a little piece of 3 8 plywood, on the ways like that. And that helps to protect the ways, of course. And, uh, uh, you know, in the these trucks aren't terribly heavy. Uh, you can handle them with one, you know, with one good hand. Uh, anyway, uh, the heavier ones, it's, it's really essential that you almost make a, you know, a cradle for the chuck. But uh, in this case, we're not going to need that. So something else about the L long spindle taper, you definitely want to have that proper uh, wrench. And uh, this is a Martin 466, and uh, they're not terribly expensive. Uh, it's also called a a five, and I think that has to do with the diameter of this locking collar. It's probably about five inches. That seems about right. The pin is seven sixteenths. So that's this guy. So uh, you want to have this tool, and there's uh, there's other ones made by Armstrong. They have a little different numbering system on them. Uh, but anyway, the the four sixty six. I like the Martins. They're just really well made. They don't have any bad edges on them. They're not uh, uh, the the uh, a lot of the Armstrongs. There's a kind of a groove in here on both sides. Just a matter of personal preference. I kind of like this one better. Okay, so we're going to first uh, take this off. Now, uh, when we go to the tightening process, you'll see why I'm going to need a lead hammer. And uh, I'm going to need it both for installing and taking it out. Uh, I've got a, it's kind of beat up, but uh, boy, these things are, are just awesome. And uh, this is an actual cook uh, lead hammer handle. Uh, the head's a little wobbly on it, but uh, boy, it still works good. We're going to recast it at some point. We're going to use it today. So uh, first thing I want to mention is there's, you know, there's two directions you can turn the, uh, the locking collar, uh, just like any good uh, any good system. There's a way to tighten it and a way to loosen it. So it's not necessarily intuitive, but to loosen it, you're going to turn it clockwise. So the, the first thing you're going to want to do is uh, put it in back gear, and uh, you're going to want to have your uh, the, uh, the pin here engaged too, so we're going to lock the spindle. Then uh, you, you can put this on, and I'm, I'm hanging out of this uh, out of this chuck, this uh, pin spanner, because it's going to it's going to want to go to the back of the machine. Okay, so there we go. So count, uh, clockwise this direction, from, you know, looking at it from this way, clockwise is going to pull this off. So that's the first step of resistance that we mentioned. Now we're getting to the second step. Now what's happening here is actually uh, the threads on this are, are pushing against the headstock and they're driving the threads on the chuck. And that's a good thing because we actually want to pull the, this tapered female chuck back plate off the tapered male spindle nose. And they're, they're driven together and I'll show you what I'm talking about. It's actually what I call seeding the chuck. Okay, so uh, next step, once we get past that, Initial uh, uh, loosening the second one. Now we're now we're getting that second bit of resistance. So now we're going to hit it again, and this is going to pop the chuck off the spindle nose. So now the chuck. I don't know if you saw the chuck drop a little bit there, but it's uh, it's now loose. So there we have our our chuck. So whenever I put a chuck back on the spindle, I always make sure I've got a uh, paper towel. I had to find a relatively clean one, wipe out the, uh, the female taper, and kind of go through the key, the key slot, do a similar thing on the male, and sometimes I'll even uh, put a little oil on it. This doesn't need, this doesn't really need it, 
So sometimes I'll put a little oil in these threads too because these are going to slide against these and it's important that they not wear. I, I doubt we'd see a whole lot of wear over the course of the life of this lathe, but uh, just for fun we'll uh, put a little dab of oil on the threads and just a little bit inside. There we go. And again wipe it out. Wipe that down. Get all the excess out of there. Figure out where the key the key is here. Here's the slat. You want to put those two together. Sometimes you have to turn the tool, the chuck a little bit as you're installing it. And then uh, turn the locking collar counterclockwise. Okay. Now it used to be, I would think, that tightening this was sufficient. And I'm gonna I'm gonna show you why I don't think that anymore. It's probably 30, 40 foot pounds on it. But watch what happens. So what I'm gonna do, I'm take the lead hammer and I'm gonna tap on the chuck in each of three locations. So watch what happens here. You can see the locking collar is now has moved. It's moved every time I've hit it. What I, what I call that is I call that seeding the chuck. And uh, I found that if you do that, you get much more consistent uh, alignment of the axis of the chuck to the axis of the spindle. Uh, if you don't do that, it can be a little bit off. So uh, doing that is an is a important part of actually maintaining your accuracy of, uh, of your system. And then uh, I also give it just a final little tap like that, and it drew it up probably another, I don't know, you know, 10 degrees or something on the on the on the collar. Okay, now we got the spindle. Uh, sorry, the chuck has been installed and seated on the spindle. Uh, question might arise: Are you messing up the bearings on this? Absolutely not. There's roller bearings in this headstock. They're not going to brunel when you uh, when you give it a little tap like that. Uh, there's several things that keep it from doing so. One of which is the actual mass of the system. There's a lot of inertia in the chuck, and we're overcoming that somewhat with the hammer, but then there's a lot of inertia in the spindle. You'd have to overcome that too. We've got a soft face on this. It's deforming, as you can see. So given a little tap like that is not gonna mess it up, and it does draw it in. It really does make a difference. All right. I also think uh, maybe you wanna add your uh, enunciators here tight and loose, if you uh, get a chance. Hey, these are great machines. I love these clousings. This is Lucas, signing off.